Hey YouTubers, Muskrat Jim here, and welcome to the second video of my disaster preparedness series. Today we're discussing hurricanes and tropical storms. The Atlantic hurricane season runs from June 1st to November 30th, but sometimes we get hurricanes outside of that window. Now a tropical storm develops over the Atlantic and then the trade winds make it move westerly into the Caribbean and then up north through the Atlantic seaboard of the states before dissipating again back out in the North Atlantic. Now a tropical storm has sustained winds of less than 74 miles an hour or less than 119 kilometers an hour and then once the storm gets a little bit stronger it becomes a category one hurricane. Now hurricanes are categorized from one through five with five being the most severe and the sustained winds in a category five hurricane are 156 miles per hour or more or 251 kilometers an hour or more. Now that's strong enough to blow your roof off. If you live in the Caribbean area, Gulf of Mexico, southern states, or even the eastern seaboard, you have to prepare yourself for the reality of hurricanes. You know that hurricanes can cause a lot of property damage. And in the case of Katrina, down in New Orleans, um, it was a category five. And that community down in Louisiana, it took years to recover. And I believe that was in 2005. And here we are in 2018. So 13 years later, it's still not as populated and as vibrant as it was way back then. So if you watch TV, or listen to the radio, you'll be notified of when there's a hurricane watch or a hurricane warning. Now, a hurricane watch is basically letting you know that within three, three or four days, a hurricane should be in your area. So since you've got a couple of days, you've got to act fast and do what you can to secure your home. You can board up any large windows, remove any lawn furniture that you have in the yard, secure your barbecue down, lawn mowers, you know, things like that. Try to lock them away, if at all possible. Even children's toys. Anything that isn't tied down can become a lethal projectile. If you happen to be in a low-lying area, which may be prone to flooding, you might even consider sandbagging your house just to keep the water out. If you're asked to evacuate, then go inland to an evacuation center or a friend's or relative's house that's outside of the evacuation zone. And there you'll be able to wait out the storm. If you're not asked to evacuate and decide to ride out the storm, be prepared for a lack of services such as telephone, electricity, gas, um, cellular, internet, and even maybe even water and sewage. And authorities say you should prepare yourself to go without these services for up to 72 hours. That gives them a window of opportunity to actually get those services back on for you. So if you do decide to evacuate, and go to an evacuation center or to a friend or relative's house, you should put together a grab and go kit. And all that is is a small suitcase that's packed and ready to go or a small backpack with a few items that'll help you get through the next couple of days. Now when you go to one of these evacuation centers or to a friend or relative's house, they're gonna have blankets and water and food and sanitation. So you don't have to worry about those issues. 
but you do need to bring certain things with you. Now I've got a list here I'm just going to read, and I'm going to put them up right here on the screen so you can see them as well. Okay, it doesn't hurt to bring a first aid kit, because then you can be self-sufficient, and you don't have to worry about accessing their first aid supplies. Uh, important documents in a Ziploc bag, and medications and stuff like that, so um, those things you should bring with you. Uh, never hurts to bring hand sanitizer. Deck of cards, reading materials, um, small board games for the kids, you know, something to keep them occupied. And you should bring your car keys, your house keys, and a cell phone charger. Now, if you do decide to stay home and ride out the storm, you should try to find a room on the main floor, away from any large windows. You can put up a mattress or something in front of a window to help prevent the glass from blowing in and uh, hope for the best. Now, if you do find yourself trapped under some debris, then it'd be a good idea to have this emergency kit. Now, this emergency kit is just in a small tote along with a case of water and it can go a long way in helping you get through those few days. So putting a disaster preparedness kit together doesn't have to be that difficult or expensive. Now authorities suggest that you should allow two liters or two quarts of water per person per day. So a package of water like this would last a family of four a couple of days. And some water is better than no water at all. So if you wanted to store two of these, then all the better. And for the kit, you just need to assemble some basic supplies. So in this plastic coat, I've got a bunch of things in here. Um, this is just a Ziploc bag that has some important papers, passports, that sort of thing. You can do the same thing for medications. Um, I've got some lighting. So here's a lantern. Spare batteries for the lantern. I've got this crank radio. It's a solar powered crank radio and it's got a USB port to charge a cell phone but it's a radio. So it's important during a disaster to stay aware of what's going on. So uh, something like this is really indispensable and it also features a flashlight. family size first aid kit. It's also a good thing to pack. A few extra flashlights, more spare batteries, emergency blankets, rain ponchos, stuff like that to keep warm. another emergency blanket. Um, another flashlight. This is a headlamp. I mentioned whistles earlier. Uh, whistles come in a variety of types. But they make some that are really flat so they're easier to carry. Some of them are really flat. Like I carry a whistle in my belt pouch, and uh, you know it's there in case I ever need it. Here I've got a multi-tool. It's got pliers and a knife. 
and this pouch also has bits in it. Screwdriver bits. So if you happen to be trapped with some debris falling against the door or something, you're going to need some sort of a tool to get yourself out. So what I've got, aside from work gloves, it's a small wrecking bar. Some other things you're going to need are non-perishable, non-cooking foods. So food that doesn't need to be cooked. So here I've got some meat and some fish and some crackers. And uh, I also have some candy and some gum. Just makes you feel better when you're eating something sweet. More batteries. Um, you also need to take care of sanitation. So you should have Kleenex packets or toilet paper and some hand, sanitize hand sanitizer. This is a can opener, a manual can opener in case I need it for these cans. And you should have like a notepad and a pen so you can leave messages or you, if you have to leave messages for people. Now I thought I had a roll of duct tape in here but I don't. Um, and you can use the duct tape for various things including taping that message up to a wall or something. And then other things you should have are things to pass the time. A couple of books, a deck of cards. Now, of course, if you have kids, they're going to have their special needs. If you're taking medications regularly, you'll have to grab those. And um, if you have elderly people or pets or, or something in your home, uh, you'll have to take care of their needs as well. But, you know, as you can see, it's not a very big bucket. And that could easily be stored under the stairs in the basement along with a case or two of water. Now if you're able, you can also store other things such as a gas generator and gasoline to power it um, so that you'll have electricity during those 72 hours when every, all your neighbors don't have electricity. Another thing you can consider getting is an extra propane cylinder for your gas barbecue. And that'll help you cook things when you don't have access to your stove. So aside from a gas generator, disaster preparedness doesn't have to be expensive. Then as soon as you're able to, be sure to contact your friends and relatives because for sure they would have seen the events unfold on television. Let them know that you're okay. So put your plan together, assemble an emergency kit, and let every member of your family know the plan. I'll add some links down below that you can click on to go and find more information on disaster preparedness. So good luck, God bless, and help your neighbors if you're able. This is Muskrat Jim, signing out. For more Muskrat Survival videos, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And remember to click the bell to receive notifications of newly uploaded videos on this channel.